Well, before these uh, bells were pealing in, uh, outside the Vatican today uh, in Rome, uh, very few would be pressed to, to even uh, identify Jorge Bergoglio, uh, the Argentine uh, cardinal who was elected pope today and will take on the name Pope Francis. But the scene right now is the crowds have thinned out somewhat, uh, is accepting the fact that uh, for the third time in a row, uh, this uh, papacy, which used to be under the firm control of Italians, is now under a non-Italian once again. Uh, but they went pretty far this time. They went all the way to Argentina to find this fellow. And uh, he is now leader of the world's 1.2 billion Catholics. Uh, Father Robert uh, Sirico joins us right now, of course, with the Active Institute. He's the president there in Rome. Father, um, you reminded me last time that, you know, we forget, and especially a lot of non-Catholics watching would say, all right, well, what does this mean to me? This guy doesn't speak for me. I don't need an intermediary. I don't need a pope. Um, but you argue that he does represent and does become a lightning rod for the very uh, issues, the basic issues of personal faith and religion that come up in this increasingly secular world, right? Yes, uh, indeed. The you just have to look at the uh, basilica behind me to realize the immense history of this place, the uh, legacy of the apostle that he succeeds. And in a way, Neil, you've just uh, articulated what his challenge will be. How does he make his role as the successor of Peter, the vicar of Christ on earth, relevant to people's lives? Uh, does he do that just by being superficial and uh, making jokes and things like that? Or does he do it by being faithful to what he knows to be the truth of the gospel? So I think uh, as his papacy unfolds, we'll see what he's done in Argentina and what he can do uh, in the world. Uh, one of the things that you know when you made it big is when all the other big global leaders sort of welcome you to their club of being a big deal globally. Uh, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, uh, issuing a statement a short time ago, Father, on behalf of the American people, Michelle and I offer our warm wishes to His Holiness Pope Francis as he ascends to the chair of St. Peter. Uh, British Prime Minister David Cameron saying a momentous day for the 1.2 billion Catholics around the world. European Union leaders like Herman von Rompuy and Jose Barroso wishing the new Catholic leader, right. and I quote here, a long and blessed pontificate. That's when you know Either the pressure's on or you can't hide anywhere now because uh, you are in probably one of the more scrutinized and uh, yeah. reported on offices on the planet. Well, that's very true. And uh, how do you combat that? By trying to be very complex? Do you combat it by being more sophisticated than everyone else? Or do you combat it in the way I think that Pope Francis will, as he's evidenced already, his simplicity, his utter authenticity and simplicity. Uh, he doesn't have to compete with them. Uh, he is the successor of the man who negotiated uh, with Attila the Hun. Uh, he has 2,000 years of thinking and tradition and prayer behind him. And uh, I think if he keeps his focus on that, that is to say on Jesus Christ, he's going to be fine. You know, Father, a, a lot of people, again, as I mentioned in this broadcast, sees on the age and they wonder, uh, maybe had the church gone a younger route, uh, a younger cardinal, uh, all this uh, draining uh, that, that uh, church attendance that uh, Catholics are experiencing, uh, that a, a lot of churches are experiencing among young people, period, w would at least slow. And that this does little, at least on that cosmetic level alone. We'll have to see, obviously, what comes of, of this new pope. Uh, and, and that's a worry. Are you worried? It no, I, I'm not. I, I'm much more, you know, you say cosmetic level. Cos, cosmetics are not very deep. Uh, what Wait we're about minute, Father, as a church a is something that is permanent. And <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but you're not elected pope. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know, I, I think what he has to do, in the, in the same way John Paul II did, I mean, he began as a vibrant and young uh, mountain climber, skier. But he ended fascinating these young people and giving us a lesson on how to die well. And I think that's the question. Young people are idealistic. And to hold up ideals to them rather than to ask them to live down to their base passions, I think is what Pope Francis uh, has the capacity to do. You know, I always wonder, and, and leave it to me, talk about my cosmetic and, and shallow nature, Father. But to go on and talk about this religious riddle uh, in a conundrum deal I was talking about with a prior guest, that 
if, if, if you're looking for reform in the church, you've got to be impressed by a guy who has skewed the rich trappings and, and benefits of his office that were provided in Buenos Aires, skipping out and living in the bishop's mansion in Buenos Aires, choosing a, a, yes. a very simple apartment, uh, no limo drivers for him, public transportation, no cooks, he cooked himself. Right. Uh, so they would be impressed with that, but they would not be impressed with his stance, uh, yes. rather vocal stance against gay marriage, and against uh, Argentina right. when it made uh, legal all forms of contraception. So how is this going to go down with a church yeah. that are wanting to sort of make this a focal point, a next step thing? I think, uh, you know, by the way, he did that tonight. He uh, decided not to wear the ermine and the red um, mozetta, this kind of capelet that he that normally would have worn. If you think back to Benedict and John Paul II, they had this red shoulder cape, and he decided not to do that. He came out. I think it's that authenticity. Remember Mother Teresa also spoke in that same simple, direct kind of way and fascinated people. I think it's a question of drawing people in by holiness, asking them to think about the meaning of their lives, the origin of their existence, and their destiny. And I think if the Pope does that, which is what is the top, you know, part of his job description, I think we're, we're going to be fine. And I think it's much more the media that's focused on those top five questions that uh, I get asked over and over here. Uh, <laughs> Than, than the kind of abiding questions. How do marriages uh, sustain themselves? How do we nurture human life and treat the elderly or the handicapped with great dignity? All good points, Father. And I am part of that very, very surfacey media. Father, always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Good to talk to you, Neil.